Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Brian from Team Aquascape. Here's what's going on this week. We've got my tour through Knoxville. I'm out here at Willow Ridge Garden Center. I can't wait to show you guys this place. I'm going to take you through, show you all of their different water features. We're going to go see five different ponds, and then there's like six or seven here. Jack is back at our job in Naperville, Illinois. He's got a huge to-do list. I'm a little worried because I might have given him too much to do, but I'll let him take you through the next couple days. I'll be back there on Wednesday, see what progress they've made, and then take you kind of on the rest of the week out there. Who knows what Chris is up to, but he's got a lot of stuff going on. So we're going to go back and forth between Knoxville, Tennessee, Naperville, Illinois, and then like I promised, our maintenance guy, Chris. Chris, what are you up to this week? We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. What is up, everybody? It is Chris from Team Aquascape. Today, we have a bunch of small fountainscape projects, enhancement style stuff, really manageable for not only a homeowner, but a beginner level contractor, but also as well as something for the seasoned contractor vet. So here we are, we are actually out at my house and we are going to be replacing this medium stack slate urn with a selection of five faux basalt columns. We have all five heights. We're gonna be using this three quarter flex tubing as well as putting some core lights in and really lighting this thing up. It's gonna get a little tight on space, so I'm gonna redo a little bit of the rock work, but I want to keep as much of the established landscape as I can. I love, you know, these little areas where moss has already established on top of these rocks. You've got the creeping Jenny, of course. You've got a beautiful dandelion in there that I will remove once I get this done. But we're going to pull apart some of this rock work, make room for us, dismantle the sphere, get it out of here, and then start dry fitting these basalt rocks, figuring out where they're going to go, and just make sure that everything fits and make it look beautiful. This is going to be awesome. It's going to be really neat because it's going to be kind of a transformation, just simply using the same reservoir leaving most of the rocks in the landscape the way that it is, but just swapping out the two fountain toppers. So it should be a pretty cool transformation from one to the other. Everybody. Brian unfortunately is not here. He left me with a pretty big to-do list. We have the machine going right now. We have to finish excavating out our stream area. I think it's like a thousand feet or something. I might be a little over exaggerating on that, but we have to run a lot of trenching for conduit and for our some drainage tile that's gonna run along this back side of this property. So we have a long list of items to do. We have to make a seam. Another thing is we have to do the plumbing inside the vault areas, and we can finish up our edges coming from pretty much to my left, which is somewhere right there and then we could finish all the way to the bowl. So we probably have a good 15 to 20 feet of vegging that we can get done, plus a whole other list of things that we get to do. So I hope you're having fun down in wherever you're at. Brian, I think Tennessee. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. He just sent me out here. He told me that he wasn't going to be here. So stay tuned and see what happens. All right, first stop. And it is a fantastic day. I don't know. It's like 70s, little breeze. First stop, I'm supposed to be focused a lot on the plants. And so you guys know how much I love plants. Can't wait to see this. And I think he's got kind of a design style like I do, like maintained and cleaned in the front, but when you get to the backyard, ooh, ah, wow. Let's see what we got here. All right, here's coming around the corner. Oh my God. Homeowner's Greg actually produces a bunch of these uh, annuals and stuff. And you can tell he's passionate about annuals because this is absolutely incredible. Hibiscus with petunias, with some New Guinea impatience. I think that's a cigar, something like a Mexican cigar plant. Oh my God. Salvia back there, Oreopsis, like just incredible. Look at all of these flowers. That is so cool. You guys, I'll bring you back here to the water feature in a second, but just look at all of these plants. All the different color and stuff, you know, ready. He's got hibiscus ready to pop. So it's just like a symphony of color all the time. He's got some perennials in here, like there's a big hydrangea. These are obviously perennial hibiscus back in here. Even the containers up on there. Oh, and then another feature, stacks later. <laughs> This is for me. 
blast about this one here. A lot of the same concepts as building a pond. The fewer rocks, the better. And so really just five big rocks in here. Two or three of them drilled out and then just put together in a clump to create awesome little fountain feature. I wouldn't really call it little. That's pretty impressive. The other thing I would notice is look at how gorgeous this all is, but how the water brings it to life. Definitely not disappointed, and I love his philosophy. He said, done intentionally. Pretty manicured in the front, nice and clean, but you have no idea what you're gonna see when you come into this back space, and it is truly awesome. Well, let's go see another. I think we got four more. So right now we've got the medium sphere out of there. We've got the reservoir now exposed. Now we're gonna start placing these faux basalt columns on top of the aqua blocks. What I love about these things is traditionally, any of the basalt columns are very, very heavy. The real ones, right? It's real basalt. It's a, what is it, Mongolian basalt. It's it's a quarried natural stone and it's very, very dense, but it's also sharp and heavy. The nice thing about these are, is they are made to look exactly like them, but they're incredibly lightweight. They're hollow in the center, but they are very, very easy to maneuver. When you're really trying to get the right angle of these basalt rocks in the orientation, especially if you are doing multiples of them, you really want to be able to move them back and forth, slide one to the left, or maybe swap it over to the right, just to based on how the aesthetics turn out. And when dealing with those original basalt rocks, they're very, very heavy and cumbersome to move. So so the beauty of these is the ease of installation, how quickly you can go about changing your design. Everybody. We got our seam done. We got our stream 98% excavated. It's a, still a little mushy, so we're waiting for it to dry out till tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna pick up some sand, throw some sand down, get all that flattened out, throw the liner out, and that way it is done over there. So we got that all wrapped up, and then we also wrapped up some of these edges. So let me spin you guys around and show you. So back behind this area, we were able to run our electrical line that runs from here all the way underneath here, all the way around here, around the patio, on the other side of the patio, and then over behind the grill, a good 10 feet there where they're gonna tap into the panel inside the house. So we got all that excavated and that's all done, ready to go. So this pipe here is gonna be on the outside of the wall. So that wall is gonna come just like this. If you can see it over there, gonna come all the way into here. So that way the electrician can mount all his boxes to the back side of that wall. And then we were able to backfill all this area with some dirt, get all this buttoned up. Tomorrow we're gonna do all the plumbing inside these vaults. We have four 9PLs that are going inside these vaults. So we're gonna get all that buttoned up. We got all this done over here. All this edging is done up to that rock over there and then we're gonna finish doing the edging up probably to right there for tomorrow that way we could still move this liner and we have some flexibility over there but tomorrow's when we get to do a bunch of trench work we got to run a trench from this dingo and where the forks are sitting all the way along the front of these arbs we're gonna keep going we got to avoid the electric line avoid the cable line and then it goes all the way to over there so we have quite a bit of trenching to do tomorrow it's gonna keep us busy all day right here is where our retaining wall is gonna go we're gonna throw an 18 inch high retaining wall starting from right Right there and it's gonna end to about right here this retaining wall is gonna hold up our whole upper pond area that's sitting up here and that way we can get a good three foot high waterfall dumping into our pond over there but we will get into that later so we're gonna have some fun i know this week is off to a great start it's been a gorgeous day we're gonna see what tomorrow brings i know wednesday is possible rain but hopefully with the weatherman being wrong lately that if they are wrong and we can keep cruising along on this job so hopefully in between all this brian has showed you guys some cool ponds and i'm looking forward to this video coming out so i can see those ponds as well all right so when we are working on our plumbing configurations, especially when we're manifolding off and trying to divide the volume of water being given out by the pump. It's important to remember a couple things when doing this. One is to always put a little stub of pipe with a cap at the end to allow that water to flow through the manifold itself and then almost equalize out by putting back pressure when the water hits this cap and then kind of flows back this way, equalizing out where it comes up through these different T's. If we were to just do an elbow up to this second part of the manifold, all that water would take the path of least resistance, go 
up here and then you would have to really manipulate these ball valves. So now we do have these three-way splitters on both of them. Occasionally we'll just do a ball valve here, ball valve here, but with this series of T's you always want to put a stub of pipe at the end. I also like using rigid to feed all this stuff. It just makes measuring the distance between all of the fittings that much easier. The other thing I wanted to point out was I have made this mistake in the past where I have put these too close together where I've, I've actually shrank these T's down and I haven't been able to really adjust these ball valves because this little part of the ball valve will end up hitting that. So just make sure you give yourself enough room. So I always like to just close everything and make sure that all of my ball valves have plenty of room to be able to be adjusted. second stop UT that's right University of Tennessee and you don't get this everywhere but this is an awesome campus to the point where I'm going to share this with my daughter because who wouldn't want a waterfall at their campus this is so cool that is every bit of a six foot wide waterfall we got two 12 p.m. that means nothing to you guys that's about I don't know 17,000 gallons of water an hour coming over the top of that rock there then you have another 12 p.m. coming down here so about 8,500 9,000 gallons of water coming down through that and just such an awesome thing in the main thoroughfare. There's the stadium, seats 100,000 people. And so everybody that comes out of that stadium comes through this area here and back down and around. You can just see the kids during school time, everybody congregating in this area, sitting by the waterfall, probably saying even meet me by the waterfall. Let's check out the few more, because they've got a bunch of them here. Little different style, a lot more babbly brook, a lot more splashing around. Again, main thoroughfare for everybody coming out of the stadium to come up and see these waterfalls and streams. Let's see if I get the right away. <laughs> oh boy, times have changed. Just incredible. So one, two, three, and a fourth one right here. Awesome, all right guys. We saw four in one stop, two in the other, two different fountain features at the other one. We've got three more stops. I have no idea how many more water features we're gonna see, but what a great day, huh? Hopefully you guys are getting inspired so far, seeing all these different water features. All right guys, number three, and I'm not even gonna take you outside because we don't need to. Look at this incredible three season room. And then the view from inside here, so awesome. Crystal clear, great looking fish, and then look at that waterfall. Oh my gosh, like lunchtime, and I think it's time for a nap out here. So incredible, I love that waterfall right there. Try to get you back in this corner so we can understand more just the lifestyle that they must be living here. This has to be why they bought the house. giant path right here. Go through a little seating area over there. I and mean, look at this waterfall. That's some thick water coming over there.
So I think what I love about these is just the fact that they're so easy to install. I mean, that really, to me, is the biggest selling point of these faux basalt columns. They're lightweight, they're easy to maneuver, easy to handle. The installation is a cinch and it goes very, very quickly as compared to trying to muscle those real basalt columns. I also love that if you wanted to increase the flow, increase the pipe diameter, right now we've got three quarter inch pipe in there. You can actually size it up to one inch. You have the ability to put core lights in or not. There's just so much versatility in the basalt rocks and they occupy the exact same spot as that medium sphere. So it's really, really cool. You get a much different look with the verticality of the basalt rocks rather than the kind of that orb structure of the sphere. And you have multiple points of water instead of just the, the sphere or the urn itself being a singular water feature. So really, really cool. I love how it turned out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let's get back over to Jack and Brian and see what they're up to. Well, Brian, hopefully you're going to be happy with the progress that we got done. Let me spin you guys around and show you what we accomplished since Brian has been gone out partying in Tennessee, I think. I think that's where he was at. Still don't know where he's at. He hasn't called me. I haven't talked to him. Still don't know what happened. I don't know if he's still alive. So hopefully he comes back tomorrow. Who knows? But we came through here and we got that seam done. We pulled that liner back, graded out this entire area, made it nice and flat, threw some sand down, threw our thick fabric, threw a liner on top, got our sheets ready to set some rock. In preparation of Brian coming back tomorrow, we're going to come through here and we can start slamming some rock in and getting this entire stream area done. We got that done. Then come over here. We got the plumbing done. So all of our plumbing down here is ran. So we have four 9PLs in here. We just got to grab another check valve and then we could finish up doing this pipe out here. But all that's ready to go in these two vaults. We have our pipe ran for our sump pump. So in that way we can come through here and then finish cutting our bricks, lay that on top. And then we are set for over here when we get the top to cover these vaults. So that's done. We got all this edging done minus this part. This is where our path is going to come in. So once we get this graded out, we could flop this liner down and then we can go through with our path. We got this edge done over here, all this done here. We just got to grab some more plumbing supplies for that bowl so we can nine degree out and then hook up into our three inch line when we run it that is going to feed this entire system but we just don't we want to hold off for right now because we are trying to not damage those pipes as much as possible without running them right now but we came through here and we were able to dig our foundation for the wall so the patio guys showed up they're getting the wall done and it's starting to rain so i'm going to make this quick we got our drainage ditch in here so we're going to come through here whenever the rain stops we're going to run our perforated pipe and then throw a gravel on top that way it catches all this water and then discharges it over to where the machine's at so i know that was a lot it's starting to rain we still got some work left ahead of us so i am going to shut this off and we're going to get back at it hope you guys have a fantastic day and that's the good side over there that's the one that we're going to be facing towards the house Everybody, it is the end of a long day. We were able to get hopefully everything done and I hope to God everything is up to Brian's expectations. Speaking of which, he is down in Tennessee still and hopefully he is having a phenomenal time checking out some of John Adams stuff and hopefully when he comes back, we get the thumbs up and we are all good to go for the last couple days that we've been on our own. And he gets to come back to his wonderful baby that we've been cruising along on. So hopefully you like it, Brian, and we will see you guys in the next couple seconds. All right, guys, we got this one and then lunch. And I can tell you right now what I'm looking Looking at, I can already tell this one's gonna be nice. And here's how I know because of their love for plants, you can tell that gardeners are gonna be into this. And this isn't just a professional landscape, this is a landscape that takes some maintenance and a lot of love. All kinds of different plants. You got the zinnias down here. I think this is a beauty berry of sorts. Water feature just tucked back in here. Some little fish feeding rock right here. Invite everybody up to walk up on it. It's really pretty coy. And then a really cool split stream. So you can see the natural hillside that they got to play with right here. Taking advantage of that natural hillside from the two streams kind of connect together down into here. Really nice sound. And I love, I think I just love the garden. I think the garden's fantastic. Magnolia, sweet gum, butterfly bushes, all kinds of great stuff. And then look at this space. How awesome is this? All right, guys, one more view of this one before we go see our final pond. As I said, I'd give you a quick tour of Willow Ridge Garden Center. Obviously, the perennials are insane over here. We got some of my favorite plants, but they've got all kinds of stuff we can't grow. Like, I gotta figure out how to get these aquatic birds. 
They're so awesome. Nice little pond right here. Again, crystal clear water. You can see all the fish in there. Love the fishery feeding rod. As you come up from the entrance of the place, they've got their signature pond here, right next to the barn. Fish feeding rock on every side. You can see how everybody that comes to this place is greeted by a school of fish. Intake bay over there in the corner. That's where all the pumps sit. Come around this way. Great little weapon filter. And then look at the fish actually jump up in through here. They get stuck up in here and then we'll occasionally come back and forth. Another great pond over here. I love all the aquatic plants. Here's that aquatic fern again. Really nice pond. Fits just about any space. What they've done so well is all the landscaping around it. We come back over this way. Great little bubbling rock. And then all the knickknack stuff. Like I love all the different pots. I like vases. I like these flowers over here. All the windmill stuff. Look at this cool bubbling rock with that stuff integrated into there. And then let me take you over to another feature. Of course, on our way to see the other wind feature. You got all these great wind chimes. I love these little stone owls. All kinds of yard art. Check this out. Really, really cool fountain rock display. Disappearing right into a permeable patio. I just love it. other side of this great outdoor living space of course is another pond cool little table and then one of my all-time favorite plants ferret's feather the way it floats across the surface like that is just so cool really cool little waterfall Well, that was a pretty full day. We saw five different properties. One, two, three, four, I don't know. A bunch of different water features. Quick little tour of Willow Ridge Garden Center. If you guys are ever in the Knoxville area, make sure you look this up. One of the top garden centers I've ever seen. Definitely stop by if you can. Tell them Team Aquascape sent you. But before we go, I said we'd have one more surprise. You guys want to see something cool? All right. We are going to John Adams' house. John Adams was, uh, I think, the 2014 maybe 15 past artist of the year and he has just built his dream pond you guys want to see something cool let's go all right so it is the end of the day i'm not kidding i told mr adams john adams past artist of the year that this was one of the nicest waterfalls i've ever seen and maybe my favorite it is so so incredible and the waterfalls is just a small part so you guys are in for a special treat here's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna take you a really really slow meandering look of this entire thing thing kind of a tour of the whole thing and i'm not going to say a single word you guys tell me what your favorite part is give john adams a big shout out and modern design john adams and we'll see you guys next week hope you enjoyed this episode hopefully this is the cherry on top you guys know what to do like comment subscribe tell all your friends hey guys don't really like subscribe tell a lot more of your friends about this channel because we need more subscribers we need more subscribers to keep doing this kind of stuff so i'm going to show you this anyways have fun here we go